Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Mick and this is my 2007 VW T5 Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name's Mick and this is my 2007 VW T5 Transporter camper van called Casper and you're watching Casper Van Life. In today's video I'm going to be doing a small modification to the van which involves this little packet here which is a T5 OEM dual USB port and I'm going to be installing this into the dashboard uh, to give me some uh, USB ports in the dashboard as the uh, description suggests. Right, should we crack on? If this is your first time visiting the channel, then please do uh, click on the subscribe button below and don't forget to click on that bell icon so you don't miss out on my next video. So currently I've been using one of these little uh, adapters which just goes into your uh, cigarette lighter on the dashboard, um, but it means you've got to have the drawer opened when you've got this plugged in and it was just getting in the way and I've with the kids wanting to charge the phones and me wanting to have my phone uh, charging whilst I'm using the uh, sat nav or something like that it was just getting a bit un untidy so I decided to purchase this uh, I will put a link down in the description below if you want to uh, take a closer look at this and where I got it from um, it comes in a little kit you get the it doesn't involve any soldering or crimping or, or anything like that. It's uh, just a, like a plug and play sort of unit. Uh, you can see there, it's got a sort of piggyback connector which goes into the fuse board, which I'll show you later. Uh, there's an earth terminal there. And there's a little connector on the end. And then you've got the USB, it's a dual USB port. So uh, the kids can charge their phone while I'm uh, charging mine and then you've got the little connector there which just plugs in like that and then whoop and then that obviously fits into one of the uh, blanking panels on the dashboard which I'll show you in a minute and also in the pack there's a little set of instructions which is really good and down at the bottom there's a little web link which takes you to their website and it basically repeats what they've said on here but it just adds um, a couple of extra photos as well just to uh, help you out when you're doing the installation all seems pretty straightforward but we'll soon find out okay let's crack on so currently i have this uh, little adapter plugged into my cigarette lighter but obviously i have to have the draw out i can't just put it in like that but what i tend to do i use this short lead and i just wedge the phone in there when i just want to charge the phone um, but normally i would have it on this little magnetic mount here and when I've got it on the phone on there, I have to have a longer lead to be able to reach to there. So my plan is to either change one of these uh, for the uh, USB module or maybe over here. Um, if I have it there, then I'll be able to use this shorter lead and it'll be a lot neater just to there but if the kids want to charge their phone as well it means the lead's going to be traipsing uh, across there if I put it over there it's more handy for the kids but if I put it over there it's more handy for me and uh, it means I can use the shorter lead so I'm probably going to put it in one of these here right I've never taken one of these off before so I'm not quite sure how I'm supposed to do it but I'm just using a trim removal tool I'm hoping that's gonna do the job oh that looks pretty straightforward oh yeah that was easy enough right so that's gonna go in there that way around I uh, don't think there's a right way and a wrong way up can see there on the dual 
ports. That's anyway up really. So I don't think that really matters. What I'll need to do is I'll need to feed this wire through there and down to the uh, down to the fuse board. And I also need to find a location for the earthing connection. Right. Let's have a bit of a play around in there. See what uh, see what we can do. Right, there's quite a lot of length on this cable, probably about a meter. So uh, there's more than enough to get down there and down to the fuse board. And uh, there's plenty of length also for the earthing connection, which I'll probably uh, put over that side. I'll take the side panel off and find a, a bolt that I can just undo uh, to connect that to. Uh, I think that's going to be, it means me going behind all this, but uh, we'll have a look, see what we can find. They might find a, a one a bit closer. There might even be one behind the fuse board. Um, yeah, we'll have a look. I uh, just need to undo the uh, fuse panel. You can just use your key for that. all your fuses and we have to use fuse 19 uh, there's 14 across the top 15 16 17 18 19 so it's going to be that one so we need to take that fuse out and we use the uh, piggyback connector with the little fuse in that goes in there and then that fuse goes in this spare um, sort of hole on the uh, piggyback and that should be it and then just put the earth cable on I think routing the cable is going to be the uh, the hardest bit right I've changed my mind and I'll tell you for why that's where I was going to put it because my phone's here and I want the short lead to go into there however to get from there to there if I'm all if I'm honest is a bit of an arse and currently when I've got my phone on there it impedes access to the stereo which isn't too much of an issue at the moment but if I ever swap that for one of the touchscreen uh, units then this is going to be in the way so I think I'm going to use one of these which makes it easier to get to the fuse board and uh, I'll just have to rethink where I put that um, and maybe have a longer lead but I think that's going to be better so I'm probably going to use one of these so I'm going to put that back and we'll start again over here right as with all straightforward jobs it's never straightforward um, I didn't really have uh, an access point to bring the wire in to the fuse area so I don't know if you can see there just there I've had to just drill a hole through the plastic because um, I'm going to be coming up to that point there and I need to drop the wire down and through here so now the um, I can feed this connector through that gap does fit trust me I've already tested it I'm trying to film and fit. there they go so that can then go through there and that will leave my piggyback connector to go into fuse 19 right I just need to get that up to there now what I've also done just to make life easier is just take just pop that panel out there I don't have an airbag in there it's just a it's just a plastic panel so I should be able to get in there now and uh, feed that wire through to there right there we go with the assistance of a little piece of bent wire I managed to just hook it and just pull it through right so that's that bit done and you can see there you've got a round connector a round pin 
and a square pin which then locate on the square pin and the round pin of that so you can't get them the wrong way around so that's going to be really straightforward yay something straightforward right next Right, somewhere in there should be able to find a earthing point, he says. Hmm. I suppose I could use that one down there, but it's just just getting to it. Okay. Not as straightforward as I thought. Right, so we've got the earth connected, we've got the dual USB port connected to the loom. Now all we need to do is uh, just connect this piggyback connector into fuse 19, take that fuse out, plug that in and then you can see there there's a spare fuse port on the piggyback the fuse we take out of here goes into that and then that plugs into there and that should be that so we'll do that now and uh, see if it works that's the fuse out 5 amp so that's the fuse back into the piggyback I just need to pull that in there now. Now it says in the instructions that you've got to have the the wire down. So let's see if we can do this. Holding the camera and doing the wire. That's gonna go in that way. easy enough. That wire is just I was just pushing it out a bit at the bottom. So I might have to just play around with that. Right, there we go. I've just neaten that wire, I've just run it along the bottom there. And that's now pushed in nice. So uh, hopefully that should be it. that back in now there we go right that looks good just pulled all the cables back in there just need to neaten that up that's all sorted and we've got the earth wire done Right, mum to truth. Oh, we have light. That's good. Ignition on, lights on the USB are on. Now at this point, I will plug my phone in and see if it charges. However, I'm using my phone to film. So uh, you're just gonna have to trust me on this one. Um, I've had to unplug my microphone, which plugs into the bottom of my iPhone. I've now got my short USB lead plugged into the phone which is why I can only just show it in shot. And I'm going to try and plug it in see if it works. So listen out for the beep. See if we can get it in the same shot. There we go. Listen for the beep. No beep. Why is there no beep?
I wonder if it's because I'm filming. Hmm. Right. We'll have to check that. Phew! Right. Breathes a sigh of relief. Uh, I've just plugged my phone in. Uh, it must have been because I was recording. It just doesn't uh, register when you plug it into a power source. Don't know. Anyway, just plugged it in and we got the beep. Uh, charging on both ports. All good. Right, we're all done. Uh, all the panels are back on now. It's all been tested, double tested, triple tested. Uh, both ports work on the little module. Uh, I've tried charging my phone and everything's working perfect. So really pleased with that. Um, I mean, it is a simple job to do. I mean, it took me a little bit longer because I'm trying to film it at the same time, which is always, if you've ever done YouTube videos before, you know that a, a five minute job can take an hour if you're recording it for YouTube. <laughs> Uh, and that was the case uh, with me today but it was reasonably straightforward probably the hardest part was just uh, routing the cable around the back of the uh, around the back of the dashboard and I had to just pop the little hole through uh, in the plastic at the side of the fuse board as well because there wasn't an access point so uh, that was another added uh, job I had to do as well as just uh, creating my own uh, earthing point I couldn't find a one that was easy to get to so I just found myself a little uh, nut and bolt and a spring washer and uh, I just roughed up the metal on the uh, chassis and used that as my earthing point and uh, it's worked perfectly. So I hope you found that of use. If you're planning on putting a USB sort of module in your van then uh, I hope it's helped you out. If it has please give us a thumbs up. Like I say there'll be uh, a link in the description for the actual module that I purchased and it gives you all the details on there. And uh, like I said earlier on, there's a little link to their website which gives you full instructions and just shows you a couple of photos as well just to help you out. So uh, yeah, uh, if you are new to the channel, please uh, hit that subscribe button down below. And uh, as always, don't forget to hit that uh, bell icon so you don't miss out on my next video. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.